Over the past couple of weeks, social media has sometimes featured letters for sharing written by Jews entitled something like, a message to my non-Jewish friends, or things I, my non-Jewish friends need to know at this time. So in that spirit, and given all that I, and I'm sure many of you, have seen and heard over the past week, here is my message to my non-Jewish friends. The photos that your Jewish friends are posting of children, women, and men who were tortured, raped, slaughtered, humiliated, and or murdered in cold blood on October 7th are not pictures of strangers. Many Jews in this country are related to or friends with someone who was murdered by Hamas earlier this month. And among our friends and our family members and our fellow congregants, we all know someone who tragically lost a loved one that day. I have posted several public photos of people on my Facebook page, killed, who fall into that category for me. One of my friends recognized the face of a person that she knows well and adores among my Facebook posts. That is how she found out that her friend had been shot in the head by Hamas in her home. The grief we feel is personal and real. Hamas is a terrorist organization that has ruled Gaza for 18 years. Hamas has used much of the major funding they have received toward terror activities. They have allowed the Palestinian people living within their borders to go without basic needs and safety. They regularly use Palestinian children and families as human shields and warfare, so as to gain support for their cause with the international community. The well-being of their own people is of no concern to them in their primary mission, that is killing Jews. When Israel sent warnings and attempted to get ordinary Palestinians out of Gaza before attacking um, Hamas, the, uh, before attacking Hamas, the Israel Defense Force showed more compassion for the Palestinians than really the Gazan government has largely over the last 18 years. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, is a common call to arms for pro-Palestinian activities. It calls for the establishment of a state of Palestine from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea, entirely erasing the state of Israel and its people. This is a rallying cry for terrorist groups and their sympathizers, including Hamas, which called for Israel's destruction in its original governing charter in 1988. Israel is a country like all countries, yet the world never doubts the right of any other country to simply exist. Even though the ancient Israelites, the group that would over the centuries that followed, evolve into what we now know as the Jewish people, have been present in this land for more than 3,000 years, which few other countries can say. It is the one country that is considered illegitimate. And that is for one reason. It's a Jewish country. Anti-Israel words are anti-Jewish words. And Jews are beyond tired of the gaslighting from the world when they claim that one can be both against Israel's right to exist and also not be a Jew hater. Israel hatred is Jew hatred. They are one and the same thing. Don't dismiss us when we tell you this. We know it's true. Years ago, I had someone in the locker room at the Boise YMCA say to me, how can the Israelis justify living on their land? I looked her in the eye and said, how can you justify living on your land? 
She walked out of the room. The vast majority of Americans have no historic stake in North America, yet they feel entitled to live and work and play on land that their ancestors barely knew existed. So when they suddenly challenge Jews for living in Israel, which has had a Jewish presence, again, for 3,000 years, it's really about their own anti-Semitism. Hamas exists to escalate the hatred of Jewish people. Your Jewish friends are scared and angry, but more than that, we are overwhelmed by the hateful words, slogans, and demonstrations that call for our death and destruction. Many of us had family members murdered in World War II because they were Jews. We have all seen many deeply disturbing photos from that time of our people being humiliated, dehumanized, starved, experimented on, murdered. Every image we see from October 7th triggers our primal fears and horrifying generational memories of trauma. Finally, Jews are among the first to speak up when injustice falls on oppressed groups in our own society. Research shows that the only group of predominantly white people, not all white people, to consistently vote for people of color is the Jewish community. Jews care and march and donate money and raise awareness for the black community, for the LGBT community, for people who are trans, for the poor, for immigrants. Long-standing Jewish tradition teaches us to use our own multi-generational pain to feel empathy for all who suffer and to do what we can to lessen that suffering. And where are those groups now when we face a crisis? When we are in physical and spiritual and emotional danger, who is speaking up for us? Apparently almost nobody. But here's the thing. We will remain steadfast. Even when we see the Free Palestine hashtag, everywhere it seems this week, an aggressive slogan calling for the complete annihilation of Israel, posted by individuals and organizations with which we have identified and which we have supported. Even with all this, we will remain dedicated to the core values that we have held sacred for thousands of years. We will fight for the oppressed. We will stand up for injustice. We will show compassion and respect for others for we have been taught that all people are created in the image of God. We will keep doing the right thing. This is what Jews do. We will defend ourselves through warfare if necessary. This is our basic right. We will do it in as ethical a way as is possible given the circumstances, but Hamas needs to go. And the Arab world refuses to assist us in this crucial task. Defending ourselves does not make us less of a holy people. We will keep our breed, our agreement with the holy, that we are to care for the earth and all its inhabitants and stay true to our commitment to righteousness while also having basic respect for our own lives and our people's lives. Our people has contended with hate, persecution, oppression for many centuries. This is part of our Jewish experience on earth. All we can do is stand proud and carry out our holy mission as a light to the nations a voice of justice, compassion, and respect for human dignity. May our light be a beacon 
and our voice be truly heard in a world that needs healing. Amen. Thank you.